Here we mm. are in Jackson Hole, mm. Wyoming, and mm. you know this has become increasingly mm. a global conference. Yeah. And I think right now, at this point, yeah. in the global economy yeah. and in global central banking, yeah, there, yeah. Are, there are some very strong trends. And one of them, of yeah. course, I would yeah. say the big conundrum right now yeah. is inflation. Yeah. All three major central banks yeah. are missing their inflation targets, mm -hmm. even though growth is stronger. Mm. Mm -hmm. What what is what is the reason for this? And yeah. is the, does it lead you to consider, gee, maybe yeah. we should focus more on growth because we're succeeding there, yeah. and kind of pull away from these inflation targets? You see, uh, certainly uh, not only Japan but also U.S. and Europe, they are not yet uh, at the range of uh, inflation target. But there's some difference between Japan on the one hand and the U.S. and the Europe on the other hand. Uh, in all three uh, economies, wages are not rising so fast. But in the US and in Europe, inflation rates are actually close to their target, close to 2%. But in Japan, inflation rate is still 0.5%, far away from our 2% target. So there's some difference between uh, U.S. in Europe on the one hand and Japan on the other hand. So wages are not rising so fast. That is true also in Japan. But prices are not rising. Here there is some kind of uh, deflationary mindset uh, strong among uh, business leaders as well as uh, uh, labor union leaders and uh, they tend to uh, uh, be cautious in raising prices. So that uh, what the companies are doing is they are heavily investing labor saving uh, in, uh, equipment and, and so on and so forth. And also they are uh, changing uh, uh, business model so as to reduce uh, uh, labor content. So by so doing, Despite some wage increase, unit labor cost has not been rising, so that they are not uh, uh, required to raise the prices. But, but they're doing well. They, yeah. GDP growth yeah. up six That's quarters right. in a row. That yeah. hasn't happened in Japan That's in right. years. That's You're right. succeeding on growth, That's right. That's right. And, and maybe something has yeah. changed to yeah. the degree yeah. that, does inflation matter yeah. so much? Japanese <laughs> households like low inflation yeah. if you've got the growth. Yeah, but, but two things. One. 4% uh, growth is good, uh, but I don't think 4% growth can be sustained. Probably uh, around 2% growth uh, we can uh, attain this fiscal year, and, uh, and uh, even uh, in the next fiscal year uh, close to 2% uh, may be uh, possible to attain. Uh, but 4% growth is, is uh, somewhat uh, unusual. Uh, but I'm quite sure that this uh, 1.5 to 2% growth can be sustained in uh, coming years. Now, that is one point. Second point, yes, prices are not rising so fast. But, as you can imagine, uh, if uh, we uh, are satisfied with uh, lower than 2% inflation, then at some stage uh, the economy may be faced with uh, uh, recession and so on and so on. Then, of course, uh, it's almost uh, impossible to uh, address uh, the situation with traditional monetary policy of uh, reducing short-term interest rate. Because uh, if inflation rate is as low as 0.5%, interest rate continue to be low. So there's necess necessity to uh, uh, to have some sort of policy uh, uh, room uh, uh, for the monetary authorities. Uh, and what so do you mean by policy room? You, know, you see, after the Lehman crisis, uh, Federal Reserve as well as uh, European Central Bank could reduce short-term interest sure. rate by about 4%. Mm -hmm. But at that time, Japanese short-term interest rate was already zero. Uh -huh. So there was no way to uh, 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 address the situation by way of traditional monetary mm -hmm. policy measures to reduce short-term interest rate. Right. So we had to mm -hmm. uh, resort to 
huge uh, quantitative easing uh, asset purchase program. So uh, I think uh, uh, the need to uh, attain 2% inflation target uh, is, is uh, I mean, it's a kind of global standard now. But, but dude, I'm trying to tell mm -hmm. you, I'm asking you, maybe <laughs> yeah. global central banks have yeah. to rethink this, yeah. right? Yeah. If everybody's missing their inflation yeah. target, yeah. with growth and, and very low yeah. unemployment, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the world has changed, maybe. Um, there's such argument, yes, among economists. Uh, but still, I think uh, Federal Reserve, as well as the ECB, are aiming at uh, achieving 2% uh, or close to 2% inflation target. Uh, as soon as possible. And that is, I think, quite reasonable. And uh, so uh, Bank of Japan, too, uh, uh, aims at achieving 2% uh, price stability target. Well, yeah, you've become mm -hmm. the master of innovative monetary policies, <laughs> haven't you? You know, yeah. the aggressive quantitative yeah, yeah, easing yeah. started before anybody else. Yeah. Yield curve control, yeah. which nobody had done before. So yeah. I, I want to ask you that in that context yeah. of where you are with it and where you might yeah. go, yeah. because um, uh, for example, mm. you know, in May you noted that mm. the BOJ's bond holdings, which yeah. are a big focus yeah. in, in Japan yeah. among investors and, yeah. and policymakers, growing at an annual pace of 60 trillion yen below mm. the 80 tr trillion ten mm -hmm. uh, yen guideline mm -hmm. from, from before, which yeah. is actually still in place in a way. Yeah. As you work with yield curve control, as mm -hmm. you see how it works, mm -hmm. as other central banks look at moving, mm -hmm. does it mean that you perhaps will look at mm -hmm. changing the reference point and mm -hmm. maybe focus uh, more on rates than quantity? Mm -hmm. You see, again, a few points. One, okay. uh, the so-called yield curve control uh, we introduced uh, last uh, September has been working quite well. I mean, despite uh, wide fluctuation of long-term interest rates in, uh, in Europe and the United States. Japanese 10-year uh, JGB interest rate has been very flat, around 0%. And uh, in that sense, uh, uh, yield curve control has been well managed. Mm -hmm. Second point, uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, the major channel of monetary easing is always through uh, lower real interest rates. Um, quantity, uh, quantitative uh, target uh, we introduced mm -hmm. uh, as QQE uh, four years ago was necessary to, re to reduce uh, interest rates uh, uh, substantially. Now, <clears throat> after four years of our experience, we found that uh, it may be uh, better to directly target long-term interest rate in instead of the amount of uh, uh, asset purchase. Okay. And, uh, and we switched mm -hmm. from quantitative target to uh, uh, interest rate target or yield curve control. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, it has worked quite well and it is quite, uh, in some sense, unique because no central bank has ever uh, made such con commitment. But, as I said, this is a kind of logical extension of uh, QQE uh, to adopt the new uh, situation. And I think the good yield curve is, is, uh, is maintained through this yield curve control. So what about this yeah. idea that you might say, hey, let's our latest yeah. innovation, yeah. small tweak, we we'll yeah. focus on rates, not on quantity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, uh, I mean, Implicitly, implicitly, even uh, other central banks, when they employ uh, non-conventional monetary measures like uh, quantitative easing, they had some uh, implicit target of uh, long-term interest rate. Because uh, traditional monetary policy measure is always short-term interest rate. Mm -hmm. Moving short-term interest rate, right. uh, uh, you can influence long-term interest rate. But that is a uh, rather remote way. Okay. And also there's uh, zero lower bound. If uh, short-term interest rate uh, uh, faced with zero lower bound, no, no possibility to further reduce. So directly influence long-term interest rate. That 
was, well, that has been the idea of all central bank when they adopted quantitative easing. But explicitly targeting long-term interest rate, yield curve control, maybe is quite unique at this stage. But are you saying then you won't yeah. move to say yeah. we are explicitly targeting yeah. 0 0.1 yeah, yeah. or 0 point on the 10-year yield yeah, yeah. and we'll, we'll just yeah, buy yeah. and sell, like an open yeah. market ratio. We just open, yeah. buy as many bonds or yeah, sell yeah. as many as we need. Yeah, You're yeah. not going to do that or do you consider it? You see, uh, as I said, uh, the target rate for 10-year JGB uh, uh, interest rate is around zero. And the uh, shortest uh, end of the yield curve minus 0.1 percent and then yield curve maybe maybe okay. and uh, you see uh, we can of course uh, if necessary uh, uh, move uh, these two points uh, upward or downward depending on the need okay. of uh, economic situation would you allow for more volatility in those moves would you maybe even consider another thing at, like at, a, a yield uh, a spread uh, off of treasuries or something and again uh, i'm just thinking about the tweaks because this yeah. is going to be in place for a while I, if i'm yeah, getting yeah. it's going to be in place for a while because <laughs> you want two percent inflation so you got to control that yield curve right you see at this stage i don't think we uh, have to uh, move upward or downward uh, the yield curve uh, but of course, as I said, depending on the economic and uh, price situation, we may raise or we may uh, uh, reduce. Uh, it's up to the uh, okay. policy board to decide, depending on the economic and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, financial situation. So, something that was yeah. in the news last time I was in yeah. Tokyo, the, yeah. the Bank of Japan yeah, meeting, yeah, yeah. was the question of uh, BO, BOJ's ETF purchases. Not always yeah. in the front burner for, for global markets, but certainly an important issue. And I think the question people are yeah. wondering, uh, you've moved to buy more from the broader uh -huh. Topix index. Uh -huh. So um, could you do even more of that? Uh -huh. or, or does that even create its own risks? I, and and that's, I, I think, think this uh, is something important to As everybody. you may know, uh, we have been purchasing so-called ETF. Uh, and uh, the idea of purchasing ETF, which is a composite of uh, uh, stocks listed, listed on the Tokyo Exchange, uh, the idea is not to uh, specifically raise uh, stock prices or, or so, just to reduce uh, risk premium. Because uh, even if uh, interest rates are substantially lowered, if risk premium is high, then uh, uh, companies, uh, firms do not invest. Mm -hmm. So we thought it's necessary to reduce risk premium. And I think we, success, we have successfully reduced uh, uh, risk premium because now companies are investing, investing uh, quite strongly. Uh, so in that sense, uh, it has been successful. But, uh, I, I, I don't think at this stage we can expand this program. No, I, I don't think it's necessary because, uh, as I said, risk premium is reduced. Uh, investment is uh, increasing in a very robust way. I want to ask you a broad yeah. question again. Again, here in Jackson yeah. Hole, global central banks, yeah. the Fed Reserve is set to start uh, yeah. the balance sheet reduction, yeah. Yeah. looking at another interest rate increase. Yeah. ECB, they don't know when they're going to do it for sure, but we know that's the direction. Mm. Mm they're heading in. And yeah. so, as you have yeah. watched the global macro, yeah. global yeah. central banking yeah. for so long, yeah. and you put Japan into the yeah. equation, yeah. How, what does it mean now, and mm -hmm. what will it mean as this yeah. unfolds yeah. for the Bank of Japan, yeah, even yeah. your own calculations yeah. of when you start normalization, yeah. because yeah. You, you are missing your inflation target, so are they, right. but they're starting to normalize for yeah. you. Yeah, but as I, as I said, uh, the U.S. inflation rate is uh, fairly close to 2%. Mm -hmm. Uh, ECB inflation rate may be somewhat uh, far away from 2%, but it's uh, well above 1%. And so the economic and price situation in the U.S. is much, much better than uh, the situation in Japan. So that they are now making balance sheet adjustment or so it is said. Uh, ECB, uh, I mean, they are somewhat behind the Federal Reserve, so they have not yet uh, started any tapering. Uh, and of course, uh, asset uh, or the, the balance, balance sheet adjustment has 
has not yet uh, uh, considered at all. Now, Japan is uh, uh, behind the Eurozone. The prices are rising only 0.5 percent, far away to 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 reach 0%. Though, Better than so negative, though. <laughs> Better than deflation. That's right. That's right. In the last uh, three and a half years, uh, we have been able to achieve positive inflation, mm -hmm. uh, but it's small right. and far away from 2 percent target. So, I think for some time, we have to continue this uh, extremely accommodative monetary policy. So. Uh, Yes, uh, we, we are carefully watching how Federal Reserve and ECB are doing, but uh, our monetary policy is for the Japanese economy. And since our inflation rate is still far below the target, uh, whatever ECB or the uh, Federal Reserve uh, do in coming months, we have to uh, address this situation by our Monetary policy. I'll ask you one more quick question yeah. because it's something I've heard so much discussed yeah, when I've been yeah, in Tokyo speaking yeah. to economists, and that yeah. is the concern about distortions to the, the, the JGB uh -huh. market, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. if you continue the pace of bond yeah. purchases, eventually yeah. the Bank of Japan owns all the JGBs, yeah. it distorts the secondary yeah. market. Yeah. Is that, as you continue on this yeah. path, has it ever become a little bit more of a concern for you, Governor I, Koda? You see, we have been carefully watching, uh, monitoring the JGB market, uh, whether market liquidity has... Uh, substantially uh, uh, reduced or not, and uh, the uh, bid ask uh, uh, <coughs> uh, spread and so on and so forth. So, uh, always we are carefully monitoring uh, the market conditions. And so far, uh, there are some uh, indicators which show uh, market liquidity may have uh, been somewhat reduced, but all, on the whole, uh, JGB market is functioning quite well. Now, Bank of Japan has already acquired about 40% of JGBs outstanding, but that means that 60% are still in the market. <laughs> and also, the yield curve control is not uh, targeted to the amount of JGB purchase. It's targeted uh, at the uh, two point of interest rate. So, since uh, uh, JGB is remaining uh, in the market, uh, uh, is uh, going to decline. That means that uh, with one unit of uh, JGB purchase, uh, the impact on the interest rate could be bigger. So that uh, mm -hmm. in coming months, there will be uh, less and less need to purchase JGBs in order to maintain yield curve. So, uh, at this stage, market is functioning. Uh, we have already acquired 40%, uh, but 60% remaining in the market. And third, thanks to the yield curve control, uh, we are not required to uh, uh, commit uh, uh, ourselves to purchase this amount of uh, JGBs, irrespective of the <laughs> impact of, on uh, on the on the market.